Hello, my name is Jack Foreman. I'm a current graduate student at the MIT Media Lab, Tangible Media Group. In my research, I leverage my background in material science as a means to explore and develop interesting materials behavior and use those explorations in the creation of new material interfaces and fabrication techniques. Today I'll be presenting defects tiles, 3D printing quasi-woven textiles via under-extrusion. Defects tiles can be produced using a standard fused deposition modeling 3D printer and require no modification to the hardware or software. With the FX tiles, we can print thin, flexible substrates that are stretchable, see-through, and have a fabric-like feel. These fabrics can be printed into a variety of shapes, such as dresses, or with a variety of materials, in this case TPU for an ultra-tough badminton shuttlecock. We can also print extremely long lengths with the FX tiles, in this case a 70-meter roll of textile in a single print which was produced on that printer. Let's get into the details. In HCI, there's been interest in developing approaches for additive manufacturing of formed textiles that combine the precise and rapid nature of digital fabrication with the soft and flexible affordances provided by textiles. However, many 3D printed fabric projects more closely resemble chainmail. The ones that get closer to the feature size and feel of real textiles often require specialized hardware or software, which limits their dissemination and are also limited in their print speeds and supported geometries. In this work, we present an alternative approach that allows flexible, thin textiles of many materials to be quickly printed into arbitrary forms with tunable properties using an unmodified, inexpensive 3D printer. Our approach leverages a common cause of print failure, under-extrusion, which causes prints to look like the images on the left. While defects have a bad reputation, in material science, they're critical to engineer materials to have new properties. A defect is often seen as a feature once it could be controlled. In this work, we show that by carefully tuning our extrusion multiplier and print speed, we can introduce periodic gap defects that afford our prints with flexibility and textile-like aesthetics. Here's an up close of the printing process. Essentially, as the nozzle moves, a glob of thermoplastic builds up on the tip. This glob will snag the top of a pillar and be connected to the next one with a fine strand. As you can see, these fine strands enable the in-plane bending, which affords the flexibility and also the stretchability. Changing print speeds and extrusion multipliers allows us to control the density, flexibility, and stretchability of our textiles. The textiles can also be printed at very high speeds, up to 12,000 millimeters per minute, which was the maximum of our printer. We also perform characterization on defects tiles printed with a variety of common 3D printing materials. Generally, we prefer to use PLA. It had nice strength and flexibility and was very easy to print with. The textiles are also very thin, around 0.3 millimeters. As a stress test, we filled a print volume with a textile roll and could produce 70 meters of fabric in a single print. Our approach is particularly unique in that we can support curvature along the z-axis to support more complex geometries than previously possible, as shown with the Miri Ori structure. Here we showcase a variety of different applications that the defects tiles design space enables. An ultra-tough shuttlecock printed with TPU, a dancing man tendon actuator, which required no post-processing to fabricate, an interactive lampshade where the deformable lampshade, the solid supports, and the conductive pads were all produced as a single print, and a variety of dresses that can be used as tangible augmentation for online shopping. We combine the shape complexity with the scale for full-size try-ons. In this case, a skirt is segmented and compressed to fit within the printer, and then once printed after 36 hours, it's removed, expanded, heat bonded, and depleted, which allows the users to try on a preform of the garment and check for a general fit. We can also pattern surfaces in a variety of ways. Here's an example of a few of these techniques. The first is where the pattern of the two components are produced using the same density. The second, where textile and solid components are printed together. The third, where the density of the mesh is varied across the surface. And the fourth, where the, uh, the pillar or the quasi-warp directions are contrasted by controlling the print direction of each segment. While post-processing isn't necessary with the FX tiles, we outline a variety of procedures, including this iron-on pocket, which can be fused to a conventional textile shirt. There's certain limitations in future work, including limited overhang angles, and in future work, we'd like to see more durable materials and sustainable filaments, as well as looking at things like surgical meshes with tunable mechanical and shape properties. 
I'd like to conclude by thanking my co-authors, Doa Doan, Hamilton Forsyth, and of course my advisor, Professor Hiroshi Ishii. And with that, I conclude my talk. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you enjoy trying printing these textiles for yourself. I will now time travel to the present, where I'm happy to answer any questions on the approach. Thank you again.